Hi everyone, my name is Ruti Su. I'm a rising senior from New York University. I'm studying nutrition and dietetics. So today, uh, the paper I'm gonna presenting about is an overview of various benefits of exercises other than weight control in obese adolescents. So first, let me introduce some background. So according to data from WHO, there are 340 million youths are obese, and there 1 billion individuals are obese worldwide. And according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in the United States, there are about 20% of adolescents in the U.S. were affected by obesity during 2017 to 2020. And there are 41.9% of U.S. citizens had obesity in the same, during the same time. And also, the annual medical cost of obese adults is over 1,080 more than healthy people in 2019. So as we can see from the data here, it is a serious national pandemic caused both clinical and economic implications about obesity. So we need to do something about it. And also, it is well known that exercise as one of the most effective ways to treat obesity and it's always connected with weight loss and it has been put so much attention about its effect about the changes in your body weight and so forth. So there's a problem that people are putting so much attention on that and ignoring the comprehensive benefits exercise can bring about people not just the weight loss, but also other health benefits. So I think it's crucial to investigate the various positive effects on about exercise on those obese adolescents. As we can see, there are increasing number of youths are being affected by the obesity. So it is so important for us to see how can exercise can help them more in a broader way. So my research method is um, doing research about uh, published peer-reviewed articles from PubMed, The Lesson, and Episco from NYU Library. So these are my criteria for studying and to filter out the paper I finally chose in my this review. And the participants are about 10 to 20 years of age and the published date of the articles is from year 2017 to 2022. So here are the results. So there are benefits of exercise for individual. According to this article, it is talking about the exercise modality on insulin resistance and ectopic fat in adolescents. So insulin resistance is related to diabetes and the body fat composition is one of the most important factors when you're defining if this people is has a risk about obesity and also the chronic disease risk. And the results shows about, um, the research talks about aerobic exercise and resistance training, and also how combining those two exercises can help those adolescents to improve their performance. So the studies include 180 obese adolescents from 12 to 17 years old. And the results shows that a reduction in total fat and also the two hour glucose test for all groups, reduction in BMI, the body mass index, sorry, and the original fat and with circumference in aerobic group significantly, and also reduction in liver fat in both aerobic exercise group and the combined exercise group. However, the resistant training group doesn't show such a significant reduction in those um, criteria and the uh, uh, body metrics. But however, um, all groups showed participants that they are becoming more sensitive to insulin um, after the intervention. So uh, according to this paper, we can see that exercise shows its benefits in increasing insulin sorry, in improving insulin resistance performance and also reducing the body fat for the aerobic exercise. 
And for this paper, um, it studies about the body composition and cardiovascular disease risk factors. So this from the same group of researchers, they also studied how aerobic exercise versus training and how the combined of the two affect the performance, uh, just as I mentioned before. So the results showed a significant reduction in fat tissue only in aerobic study group. And there's a significant reduction in body weight in all group. So we can see that aerobic group do have its effective um, like performance in reducing the body fat and the whole total body weight. However, other two, like especially resistant training, doesn't show such effect in this way. And the next paper is talking about how uh, prolonged continuous access training have effect on abdominal visceral fat. This means the body fat in um, just attached into your um, dummy. So this research studies the high intensity interval training and equal intensity continuous training in 118 obese adolescents. So it, um, the main point is studying about the effect on abdominal visceral fat in overweight young women. So it doesn't include any um, male participants. Um, and also the res this results show that the both kind of exercise effectively re reduce the visceral and subcutaneous body fat. Sub subcutaneous means the body fat just lying under your skin and attached to your body muscle. But no significant difference between the two types of the exercises. So this kind of um, high intensity internal training and uh, MICD are not the aerobic exercise, they are anaerobic exercise, which is similar to the resistant training from the previous studies. The next paper, it talks about how exercise can have effect on the inhibitory function of overweight and obese children. The use um, so this is kind of a new study, like they talk about how exercise have its effect on children and adolescents' co cognitive functions. So they also study about how high intensity intermittent exercise and high intensity continuous exercise and it's split the participants in two groups and also they have a control group. They only watched the cartoons and the results shows that it is effective in facilitating the cognitive and inhibitory functions among those obese children. However, no significant difference between the two types of exercise specifically. And also here is another study talking about how exercise could have benefits on plasma levels of several um, those serum levels in obese adolescent boys, no female involved in those in this study. And it is a eight week circuit resistant training and 40 adolescent boys were involved. And the results showed a reduction in anthropometric data like weight, body circ uh, waist circumference and so forth. And also their serum profile, including glucose, insulin, testosterone, etc. So these also show a reduced uh, risk for chronic disease, as well as the serum uh, plasma levels. And finally, there's another group like the research is in the school setting. So the researchers set a seven months random clinical trial, including 172 girl students from 12 to 16 years old in Central Era. It includes sports workshop, regular private consultation, exercise course, etc. And the results showed a reduced in average BMI and hours of sedentary behavior is also decreased. And also the students have lower perceived barriers for doing exercise by themselves. And there's show um, increased physical activity, intention, and also higher self-efficacy. So this one is actually uh, kind of different from the um, 
a research focus from the previous articles, but this one is kind of focused more on how exercise and can help students in like in the school setting, like how such programs can be in the school and help students to be uh, more physically active and so forth. So the discussion. So actually all studies exclusively study the effect of various exercise training sessions with control in the participants' regular diet. So they have their uh, ways to control that. Um, every student have the, the similar diet from before they are participating in the studies. And also it showed a well-rounded benefit from body composition, serum metabolites, and also self-image and cognitive function. So it kind of covered a broad way like about how exercise could bring benefits for those adolescents. However, there are some um, shortcomings, like non-generalizable -general, uh, results. Some of them only involve some kind uh, one gender of participants. Some of them are conducted in um, just one area in the country, and some of them only involved like certain ethnic groups. So that's kind of a problem. And in conclusion, so we can say both aerobic and resistant training do have some level of benefits for obese adolescents. However, for the um, body composition, especially for fat reduction, aerobic do have some higher performance um, consider like over resistant training. And future studies, in my opinion, could be conducted in the broader region and including more ethnic groups and do have more sample sizes. And they can also talking about how, uh, what is the minimal effective amount of exercise to have such effective benefits for the people with obese, obesity. So this is my reference list. And thank you so much for listening.